I love farming. My background is farming. I grew up growing cotton and millet and rice. When I came here ten, over 10 years ago, we have only two Korean people in Minnesota. Now we have uh, 8,000 Korean people in Minnesota. All of you contribute so much for this country so far. And now we are going back to farm for Minnesota, for this country. The Minnesota Food Association trains minorities and immigrants in methods of sustainable agriculture. On February 2nd and 3rd, they held their eighth annual Farmers Conference. Some attendees of this year's conference were asked to tell a story about their farming experience. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is May Lee. I am a farmer and I'm here today to tell you a little bit about my uh, farming story. I am very happy to see uh, uh, new faces as well as old faces from previous years, um, which to me is a, a very good sign that um, this is a very um, useful th um, conference for everyone. And um, I believe that uh, there is no limitation to learning. So I would like to share my story as to why uh, as to why I'm interested in farming and also to share about um, getting grants for farming. Um, so the grant that I uh, the grant that I'm talking about is for um, what's called a high tunnel. Uh, so my daughter helped me to apply for this grant, um, which has uh, been able to um, help me build this high tunnel. And um, my business is called Mongpa. Garden. Mongba Mongba Gardens. Garden. And so in this high tunnel is where um, is where I plant the um, the small crops and I would like this is what I would like to expand more of in the, for in the future. Uh, so last year I uh, got the grant and I built um, the first high tunnel. Uh, it was uh, during March of last year. Unfortunately, however, uh, there were some very strong winds and it blew that high tunnel down, which um, uh, made me very sad. So my advice would be uh, to, to be, uh, try to be thorough before um, building a high tunnel. Uh, so 
tới rồi khó rồi rong xiên rồi làm mỡ rồi u tu tu xiên thế, còn nay giờ ít khó kể cả, giờ họ thì u chỉ mỡ à nó chỉ có những biểu ý lúc chế linh đó nó chỉ u tu sửa rồi rong rồi vì đó họ cũng ít nhiều mà rồi là, để cụ thể là cho họ tới mình đó. It was a very great learning experience for me, uh, despite the fact that it, it hasn't turned out as what I um, wanted. And um, I would again, uh, I, I feel that I rushed, I, was, I rushed myself a little bit to build the high tunnel. Therefore, um, I would recommend that anyone who is interested to do a similar thing to uh, take caution and um, don't rush, take your time. So um, it was something that made me, uh, I had high hopes for, it made me very happy, but again, um, when it didn't work out, it also uh, made me very deeply disappointed too. So I um, personally, I personally like organic farming very much because um, this is something that is very natural. Um, it is something that our ancestors have done for a long time. It's something that is a very, um, very good, very healthy, beneficial for everyone, um, and it makes me happy. Theo so, um, again, I really like organic farming. I like to grow org organic crops. Um, it, brings, it brings me great pleasure when I'm able to have the produce and I sell it to people, uh, knowing the fact that they are um, able, they're taking something that's, that's going to be very healthy, very beneficial for them. Um, and um, in regards to farming, I believe everyone has their own per, per, uh, perhaps unique ideas and ways of growing and farming their crops. I think um, it, along the process, we are able to figure out what method is, uh, works best for us. So um, that is one thing w why I like gardening and farming so much. So how many of you here today feel that farming is a, a very great way to, to earn money? And how many of you love to farm? Please raise your hands. So it looks like a lot of you. Um, uh 
But the fact is, uh, for me, when I say that um, uh, gardening um, is a good money earner, what is more fulfilling? And uh, the truth is, it's it's a it's something that it, that enrich that riches, excuse me, that makes me rich in heart and mind. And at the end of the day, I feel good about it. Um, however, sometimes I run into problems, financial problems, because I don't have enough money to um, to buy seedlings, to buy um, seeds and the basic things to get started as well. However, um, like I said, it is a livelihood that uh, makes me feel uh, good in, in my, my um, heart, mind, and body. So that's why I like it. กูยอดานังเจียมเจียกูหายมาอีนู่นหรอหายจีตาเลยอ่ะแต่สิกูหายไม่เมลินอ่ะเสียตัวเนื้อซื้อกูจีฮะอีตัวกูหายตัวกู
spraying, I can still smell the chemicals which we used to spray the cotton maybe 30 years ago. Many animals were dying around me and some of the people around me were dying because of the methods which we used then. We had to do millet. You had, we had to take care of me and my brother, making sure that the birds will not eat the millet before we harvest. Those who have done this, they know, you know how difficult this can be. Two of you in a five acre land, it's almost impossible, but we did it. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because I grew up and I said, I don't want to do this anymore because it's the most difficult way of making a living and there is no fun. Unfortunately, I love farming and I, that's why I'm back here. <laughs> you can't run away if you like to do something. So wherever I've been, I've been doing farming. The little I've been able to do lately is that I grow whatever I grow and take the food to the food shelter. Why is this important to me? The reason I'm, I want to be a farmer, I do not have an answer to the question as to why some people still sleep hungry. That bothers me a lot. And that's why I've been able to find a place to take the food I grow which is a blessing. To me, that is extra. I take it to the food shelter. I'm praying that Maria will give us a big piece of land so I will be able to share more of the food I grow. But if you can help me with this, I will be very, very happy. Many people sleep hungry, and many people have more food to waste. This is why I want to be a farmer. If I can grow food, not for profit, but just to break even and make sure somebody else does not sleep hungry, I'll be a happy human being. So this is my mission as a farmer. Other than that, I'm blessed to be here and to see all the opportunities existing. May God bless you, and I hope to be here next time. Thank you so much. That was so wonderful. And you told me you were going to say one or two things. So that was wonderful. OK, so our next um, farmer is Bon Pa Lor. Hello and welcome. I'm uh, very happy to see everyone here today. Um, I uh, hope that we can continue seeing each other uh, in the same conferences for um, many years to come. I came to the United States in uh, September 1986, and I started working then. I have been working for 17 years. So uh, when I quit working, I um, started babysitting, and then in 2003, we moved to Arkansas. So 
So the first, um, the first chicken house that we bought was in um, Missouri. Missouri, Arkansas, and the uh, price was a uh, million dollars. And then after that one, we um, started another one in Danville. Oh, we sold the chicken farm in Missouri, Arkansas, and then we moved to Arkansas, Fort Smith in Arkansas. And the second chicken farm in uh, Fort Smith was uh, cost us $500,000. So the breed of chicken that we raised was is a uh, pullet chicken. So the total number of years that we spent uh, raising chickens in Arkansas was five years. So unfortunately, however, my uh, husband fell sick and we could not continue the business. So we moved back here. So we, we could not sell our farm, so we transferred the ownership to some other people. So uh, after that happened and we came back here this year, I decided to farm again, but um, I'm only farming two acres. So uh, growing crops is not an easy thing. Um, again, and um, when, when you go out and buy produce at the stores, you don't know what, what they have put into it. So um, in the future, I would like to um, expand my um, crop growing. When we moved back from Arkansas, we came back penniless. And um, whenever I think about it, it really um, it really makes me sad, and um, I feel um, a lot of hardship because of that. Thank you very much for listening to my story. I hope to see you all again next year. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I know it's a hard story to share. Um, I think what Bumpa didn't tell you guys was that they went down there to Arkansas and they ran a poultry farm and they lost everything. All the homes, all the hard work. And she came back homeless to Minnesota. And so it was, it's really hard and I thank you for sharing that. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Priscilla. Uh, yeah. My name is Priscilla Patrick. Um, I came from Burma. So uh, we are so great to be here two days. Uh, <clears throat> we got a lot of, uh, it's a friend, or we got uh, a lot of opportunity to be here within in, in, in two days. So I would like to say all my friends stand up and say thank you uh, for the committee, uh, for the uh, uh, people around here and the people who arranged for the conference. That W, we will say the Korean word, W, Danny. No? Thank you. 
because of uh, all my Korean people here today, they are new in this country, not more than one year. So they came here like a newborn baby. So it's a very great opportunity. We are here, and we would like to thank you all the uh, planning committee, all the sponsor, all the, uh, and then the workshop uh, presenter. So we learn a lot. We never learn in our life. So like, uh, I came here like the last uh, 10 years. I came here like a refugees. So <clears throat> like, uh, I came here because of uh, 1988 in Burma at, at Bryson. I had to leave from my country. So I came here in Minnesota. At first, I stayed in uh, California five years. And my friend uh, invited me to move to Minnesota. Minnesota is a cold place. And then one day, I saw that one of the nurses, we sat down and wait a car, and we talk, and she's also moved from uh, California, from the warm weather. And we talk about why you moved from California. So they said, it's, uh, we have a good opportunity in Minnesota. So that's why my people love Minnesota, to uh, when I moved, the, When I came here 10, over 10 years ago, we have only two Korean people in Minnesota. Now we have uh, 8,000 Korean people in Minnesota. They love Minnesota because of a good opportunity for education, for a job. No, uh, so that's why I, we are really appreciate and thank you for all the community and especially Lynn know about Korean, uh, Gail know about Korean. So we are, we are very thankful and uh, appreciate for the understanding and love our people, not only then, for all of you too. Thank you so much. Thank you, Priscilla. Yeah, it's exciting to share stories. And once the momentum gets going, it's really fun. Um, so our next farmer, we have another farmer. Uh, his name is Nosa. Good afternoon, everybody. I give this time to thank every one of you here to give me the opportunity uh, to talk in, in presence of you concerning farm. When you talk of farm or farmers, you know that most of our people who migrated from different countries and they come over here most of the time running after money, running after uh, nursing business. I'm not condemning them, but I'm here to tell you that head is wet. My mom left me at the age of 94, 2011. She never knew the way to hospital. I started to say that all of you here I so much so encourage you to uh, buy the idea of encouraging people to farm. When you eat well, then you start talking about health. Health is wet. As I said, my name is Nosakai Ibunawaka. I, by the grace of God, I'm an apostle. But it came to a time when I came to this country, I, I have been here for almost 19 years now. I came into the country as a special immigrant on religious, on religious basis. But I, I looked at it that there are things that we are looking so down upon, and that is good feeding. Farmers are well uh, people that we're supposed to give a great recommendation and, re and respect. Without you eating, I know sometimes, I work in the head field sometime, uh, they will ask you first whether you have taken food before they apply some medication to you. So, as you are here, you are part of the living of the people. Now we talk about farming. In about two years uh, ago, I could say roughly, I, I did it twice that I deal with the souls of the people, preparing them for the kingdom. But now, here on earth, here, there are still some people who are not able to even feed. 
then what do we do? I get involved into what we would call community garden. That is why I'm going to start telling you people that Rome was not built in a day. You have to start from somewhere. I far back in Nigeria, I'm from Africa, I'm from Nigeria. I know that when I was working with the, a national airline, I was still having a garden that I was still using to take care of my family. And, uh, and as well, I was doing a poultry, a, a poultry farming. It is not all crops we are talking of. There are times we go to animal hus husbandry. This is the reason why we are here. In any guiding, in any place you are, you can brighten the future of where you are there. Uh, in your compound, and I'm happy with Minnesota State now, that they have given uh, a sort of permit for people to grow their little um, poultry, uh, not so much within where you are. And that can uh, help you get out of spending your money in going out to buy to buy. But I now said, uh, for me, when I came down to realization and I look at, I plant okra. The Greek one you put call here okra. But in my country, um, as far back as 40, 43 years ago, that was what my parents were using in sponsoring us in higher institution and getting to university. And I looked at it here and I planted it. I tested it because and of um, Harmony Community Garden gave me an opportunity. They, though I came in very late because my wife was there, it was not directly me because I was not working there. But I got a little portion, and I am telling you, if it, time would have permit me, if I, were, if I knew that I were to talk here today, I would have still bring some of the crops I have. I have lots of tomatoes, I have lots of pepper, I have, in the small portion I was given, and, uh, and I have watermelon. You see, all these crops we are talking about helps in building the body. We are talking of the body building. And we are talking again on the government coming up to encourage us. I was so impressed when the senator, a senator could come to a group like this to talk about uh, encouraging the people. It's just an encouragement to every one of us here. And at the same time, and I'm saying that wherever you are, don't think that the little portion you have is not enough for you. Three years, uh, about two years ago, some tomatoes are still in my freezer that I have not finished using. I, I, I'm not doing it for, for money for now. I'm not saying that people who are doing it for money, they are doing bad, but it's just a community uh, sort of production and sharing with the people and make the people realize that the people who are doing this job, they are not a sellout or a people that are not recognizing the community. The farmers are supposed to be recognized in the, farm, in the community because they are helping the body they sow. We say that the doctor uh, uh, care, but, the, but God cures. But if you want to administer any medication and there's no food in the stomach, you are doing more harm than good. So I'm saying that every one of us here, let us be encouraged. Right from where you are, you can still start. Though I started in the uh, community guiding, I know uh, Anne was just whispering to my ear as I, I came down here that they have even approved us getting a more land. So you start from somewhere. And even your, you, in your own house, you can still start by planting something on your pot, on your little, little pot. I know. Uh, there were years back, I planted tomatoes for only my pots around my compound. I was able to save the money of buying uh, tomatoes for that year. So I, I am encouraging everybody, and I'm still saying that it's not all the time we wait. Yes, the government will help for helping us when we want to go more higher in the, in the farming uh, field. But the little you can do with the little you have, start. God will improve it. I thank each and every one of you for listening to me, and I'm taking the opportunity again to thank Anne of Community Garden, who gave me the opportunity to start farming uh, in United States in America.
Thank you, Nosa. So we have our last farmer. Um, her name is Po Tao. Hers is going to be slightly different. She will also be speaking, but she's going to be speaking in Hmong, and then um, what she's saying will be interpreted. Hello, everyone. My name is Po Yang Tao. Uh, this is my second time coming up to speak to everyone. Um, still, there's a lot of you, so it makes me a little nervous because um, I don't do this quite often. I'm going to tell why I am farming. Uh, ever since I have, been, have come to the United States, I have, for 30 years, I have been farming ever since. My husband also likes to uh, farm, and um, we both like uh, to to farm organically or farm without any chemicals. The thing is, we see the United States as a very modernized. Uh, a developed country. However, and, uh, ironically, why is it that a lot of people have, have a lot of sicknesses? So in 2003, my husband and I, we um, came to the farmer's market in here in Minneapolis, in Minneapolis Minnesota. We grow a variety of crops. We also raise chickens. Since, since the year 2000, my husband has retired, and we, we both have farmed. It's been our livelihood ever since. We both um, like what we're doing very much, um, and uh, the only thing that we regret is that we, are, we feel we're a little too old for this. If we could, we would. If we could, we would add about twenty more years to our to our ages. We are very happy to come live here in the United States. We feel that America has helped, um, has been a savior to us and, and brought us, and has uh, brought us to a better place. We feel that regardless of one's educational background or, um, or um, history, America has given us, uh, has given everyone the same opportunities to, um, to grow and prosper. So that's, we're, we're very thankful. So uh, we have three daughters and two sons. If uh, our family were still living back in my native homeland, I feel that probably uh, my kids would not have uh, would not be as educated as they are today. 
So we feel that it is because of the opportunities that we received here in the United States um, that has made um, our kids, that has given education for our kids. Uh, one is a doctor and another is a nurse. So currently, my husband and I, we are, um, we would like to uh, farm organically and uh, eventually uh, be certified as organic farmers. Because currently we feel that a lot of people are uh, turning for uh, crops and vegetables that um, do not have a chemical or are um, organically, um, that are planted organically. So currently at our table at the farmer's market, uh, we, we've asked for permission to label our produce as um, free of chemicals and pesticide, and we have received uh, the permission to do that. So if you come to the farmer's market and you see a table that's, uh, that says organic and chemical free, that will probably be us. <laughs> we come from uh, the town of Spring Valley, Wisconsin. Thank you to America, thank you to the committee and everyone today for giving the opportunity and chance um, for, for me uh, to have what I have today. So I want to ask Paul a few questions, um, just because I'm really interested. I know Paul has been coming to our conference for several years now, so... Um, I could take it, so... So, um, Paul Oja, ก็ so Pua said her biggest challenge is actually uh, reading and the documents and record keeping. That's her biggest challenge. Farming is easy. Raising um, animals, livestock, is easy. We know how to do the work. The hardest part is the paperwork, especially getting um, certified organic. It's because we're old. That's why. <laughs> Thank you. เคยกูมวยลอลูซานูตุเนตายเนอะเอ่อเนตายเนาะนะก็ก็ไปรอเต้เป็นเราเต้ใช่อ่ะเอ่อกูนูก็ให้เตียกูเป้าให้เตียเ
knowledge do you have that you would like to pass down to the younger generation in regards to farming uh, and gardening that you think would be useful for the younger generation to know? Uh, number two, what would you what do you have to what advice do you have to motivate the younger generation to f become farmers just like you? Um, so, my answer is if the younger generation do not mind, they can come watch my husband and I how we farm and how we grow our crops on our land. Uh, that would be one method. And um, another one is just be, um, just be very hardworking. That's something that is very um, good to have. In regards to farming, you don't have to be highly educated. You just have to be diligent, believe in hard work, and just like it, and it will work for you. You wake up early. Uh, wake up early, you go to bed late, and that's how it's been for me. And if, uh, if we listen to each other, then it will work out. For our generation, we've seen how hard our parents' generation worked. So I have to agree with um, the auntie here that it comes down to hard work. And I'll be very honest, there have been many, many, many days where my mother will get up, go to the field, and come back, and I will have done my eight hours, and she's doing her 12. So I know that their generation works a lot harder at it than we do. What I believe our generation has as an advantage over their generation is we have technology, and we have knowledge, knowledge that we can share with one another to lighten our workload, to do things different, to do things better than we used to do before. So I think that for we can learn a lot from their generation, and, but for us to go forward with our generation, we have to take advantage of all the technology and all the knowledge that has come before and put all of that to use so that, I don't know about you, but personally for me, I don't wanna work as hard as their generation. So I wanna work as little as possible using all the technology and all the knowledge that we have. And that is what we're here to do today, sharing knowledge and sharing the technology so that we can all do the work a little bit less harder. <laughs> 